Le grosse. We all love to recycle and today we are going to build not one but three different prototypes to test which is the most efficient way to build yourself a bike that can generate electricity in your house to charge all the devices. So let's start the first one. So there are different motors, all of them have magnets, magnets are so important to produce electricity. The first one is a very cheap motor, it's the most common one, it's a 300 watt motor and you can find a link here to buy one. This is an electric scooter brushless motor, has some reductions inside which boost the RPMs of the motor, you will understand later. And the last motor, which is the biggest one, is this, a very cheap brushless stator washing machine motor. This is so big. Let's start with the first motor. If I spin it, I produce electricity, so it's just like a dynamo. I can take the frame of an exercise bike and remove the black, the back flywheel. This is a very heavy metal flywheel and we use it to accelerate and boost up the RPMs of the motor. If we spin faster the dynamo, we will produce much higher electricity and amperage. This is a great if you want to have more power. After cleaning the surface, we can then take some sandpaper. This is an 80 grit sandpaper. It's very rough and I'm going to use it to give more grip to the flywheel. After you will understand why. After cutting three strips we need now to take some glue. This is a contact glue but before gluing the parts let me show you a little trick. When you connect two parts and you glue them together is a very good idea to cut it at 45 degrees. This is so important because will help to let the parts stick and don't come off uh, very easily. So I can take the contact glue, put it on one side, also in the other side, let it cure for about five or 10 minutes. Spinning it helps to dry the glue and now that everything is dry, I can connect the parts. Be very precise, after you connect them, you cannot remove them and you can clearly see that the cut is so precise and also the, the width of the sandpaper is excellent. Another option could be to use some rubber instead of the sun sandpaper. This can work as well, but sandpaper works the best. After installing the belt, everything is so silent. The more silent it is, the better it is because I'm planning to use it indoor. So everything is working, nothing is keeping and we can then take the motor. This is a 24 volt, 300 watt motor and is DC, which means inside there are magnets. That's the reason why I can produce electricity. I'm then welding a little frame so that I can mount everything on top of the exercise bike. When you weld, just do things very fast because we don't have want to bring heat to the magnets, otherwise they break. I then take a skateboard wheel, this is a very small one, and I also weld a little frame so that I can hold it. And now I can, I can connect the two parts with the stainless steel tube. It's a bit long, so I can cut it at dimension, and you can see what my plan are. I just drill a little hole so I can connect and let all the parts spin together. So the motor will spin and also the skateboard wheel will, will spin with it. I can take then a metal spine and push it inside so I connect the parts. This spins freely and it's very important to have some movement, some play between the two parts because it's very difficult to align precisely the, the motor with wheel, so having some movement is a great thing. After welding all the frame, I can take two very small hinges and then I connect and weld all the parts here on the back, very close to the flywheel we modified earlier and you can maybe understand what my plans are, is to connect the skateboard wheel very close to the flywheel of the bike. And this movement is necessary because maybe we aren't so precise and it's also a great idea to add a little spring that will connect and have the perfect grip and friction between the two parts. So a spring like this with a bolt is connected here on top and I can decide how much tension to apply and then this is all we just made. One day and it's ready. Ed eccola qua! So consider that this is an halogen lamp which uh, consume much more power than a normal LED lamp. 
And right now I'm just pedaling very, very gently. I can imagine being like in a flat street, pedaling very, very slowly with a city bike. Not, 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 not so much power is needed to light up this light bulb. This, for, uh, probably if I pedal a little bit faster, you can see we are producing much more light and probably if I go faster and faster, I can make the lamp explode as well. <laughs> <laughs> prototype number one. Let's give a vote from one to ten to this prototype. I will say only a six and a half. Even if it's working great because we are producing 60 watts without problems, the legs aren't getting tired. It's very, very good production. It's so noisy. You can really hear that it makes so much noise. And yeah, this is terrible if you want to use it indoor. <laughs> I will not use it inside the room in any case. But this is terrible and it's also very complicated because you have to build yourself something that holds the skateboard wheel. And yeah, this is so complicated. Probably it could be a very great idea to change it and use a much longer rod from the motor itself and connect a rubber wheel on top. And this can spin and, and accelerate much more the fabrication of this project. But overall, this works great. We have a good, very, pro, very good uh, electric production. So but let's move to the prototype number two. So let's start with a new exercise bike. I mean, a used one. Nowadays, you can find this for a very, very cheap price, almost 20 or 30 bucks. This is a basic model, we just need the flywheel, and today we are going to use this, that is a brushless motor that came from an electric, an electric scooter. Consider that the faster we spin the dynamo, the much higher the voltage will be and also the current, so the production is great. Inside this brushless motor, there are gears, are plenty of gears that accelerate the, RP the RPMs of the motor. So you can imagine that in the core of the wheel there, are, there is a motor that spins much faster than the outer part that is made in rubber. So even if we turn the wheel slow, the motor inside will start to spin much faster. Which is great, this is just what we need. It's almost made for this purpose, converting an exercise bike into a, an electric generator. So my plan is to use the flywheel that is here on the back and connect directly the rubber here on top. Lucky for us, the rubber has more friction and probably isn't necessary to add some sandpaper. So I only need to fabricate myself a little structure that holds the tire perfectly straight. So let's start, first of all, making a little bracket that holds the wheel in place. So two little washers are placed here. And remember, inside the motor that generates electricity, there are magnets. This is only thanks to the magnet that we produce electricity. If the magnet gets too hot, they will stop producing electricity they will break so it's absolutely crucial to cool everything once you are welding the parts no heat has to arrive and reach inside the motor itself now we can continue the structure and everything is ready very simple component and you can see here on the left I make like a swivel point because remember if you cannot make yourself something that is precise just make it adjustable so these two parts will fit just because it, it will swivel and align perfectly now I can weld the part here on the bike frame and it's ready. So it was very simple to make and let's test how noisy it is and how hard it is to pedal. And overall we say it's so silent and also so easy to pedal in both directions, doesn't change the, the voltage and the electric production. I decided as well to make some grooves here on the very very small grooves here on the flywheel, the metal ones, so the grip between the two wheels is excellent now right now. And I can remove the front part of the exercise bike, which isn't necessary. The lighter it is, the better it is for me to transport the project. I also added a little spring so we have maximum grip and maximum tension between the two wheels.
prototype number two and let's give a vote from one to ten i will give an eight and a half to this prototype it works great it's so silent you can barely hear the noise of the motor and the most interesting thing is that it's so simple to build you can see our just uh, is a metal frame that keeps the tire perfectly centered on top of the flywheel of the bike. And I also added a little spring here on the back to keep tension uh, from the wheel on top of the, the flywheel, but I think it isn't really necessary. It, the, 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 the weight of the tire works uh, by itself. So very great prototype. Um, I really love it. these motors we are using will produce and generate electricity that is AC, which means the two poles are switching very rapidly between positive and negative, and this isn't very handy for us. Usually all the devices we have at home use DC current, so we need to convert AC into DC. This is very easy and also very cheap to do, you just need to take a bridge diode rectifier. And it's this little component, you find the link to buy as well here below, and you just connect the wires in this configuration. We end up to have two cables that come out. If instead we work with this kind of motor, we have a three-phase poles, which are these, and we have then three cables that produce electricity. You need to have a different bridge rectifier that has three inputs and two outputs, and we have as well positive and negative lead coming out. This is so handy, you find a link here below to buy all the components I'm telling you in this project. And here on this motor, you can clearly understand that the three-phase output is here on the right inside the plastic component. On it. Very easy. This basically is the biggest motor and I'm pretty sure it can generate so high current. I'm pretty sure it can also generate with very very small RPMs. The trickiest part is that we have to build all the structure that hold the stator and the magnets perfectly stable. This is very difficult because we have a very small gap between the stator and the magnets. I'm talking almost about half millimeter, so everything has to be very precise. This is tricky for me, you know, I'm pretty rough with my projects, but let's try it and take an approach very mathematically and yeah. I also bought some new ball bearings, these are very cheap ball bearings and I have to find a way to mount everything so that this component I'm holding here in the left hand can spin freely, precisely straight. These are very standard ball bearings. I have to now find something where to hold them and like something like a tube so that I can press fit it inside them. So the tube of the, the exercise bike of before has the perfect dimension for this purpose. It's 48 millimeters wide and the ball bearings are 47 millimeters wide. So if everything fits, it will fit precisely. So let's test it and all the parts fit perfectly. This is so satisfying every time I find this, <laughs> this coincidence between the parts. So that's great. Let's continue taking a metal plate. This is a three millimeter thick plate. It's very sturdy. And now what I have to do is drill a hole bigger than the inner diameter of the ball bearing itself. So I can use this drill bit and it's so important to add some oil when, once you are cutting metal. Otherwise it gets so hot that you can ruin the cutting part of the, the, the drill bit. So uh, after a couple minutes, this is the result. I remove the inner part of the center of this plate and now I can take a tube. This will be like the axle of the uh, of the dynamo and this will fit perfectly inside the ball bearings as well will fit inside the washing machine motor. This is a precise fit uh, so I can add some oil and using the hammer press fit it inside. This has to be very accurate, has to spin centered and all straight otherwise Otherwise, the stator and the magnets will touch together and this is terrible. So everything now is spinning great. I can take a smaller piece of tube. This is just for, for aligning the ball bearings. And after aligning all the parts, I can just weld everything in place. Take your time try to don't overheat the ball bearings, otherwise they can break or ruin. So a couple weights, a couple welds and some water. I can take an exercise bike, a little bike from a kid and remove the pedal gear. This is quite a big gear because we need to have a ratio of turning between the exercise bike and this dynamo that is low RPM. This motor doesn't have, the, we don't really need it to go faster. So this ratio for me is great, but you can decide 
what's best for you. So everything spins through and it's straight, so I can add some spot welds here, and now I can weld finally the exercise bike to this very huge dynamo in the front. This is great. I added a chain, now it's a bit loose, later I will put like um, something a tensioner, and, but it's so smooth and I don't need force to do to spin everything. Number three, and I will give from one to ten, I will give only a seven to this project. This is very, very complicated to build. You can see it was so tricky to center the ball bearings, the, the stator and the motor and everything. By the way, the production of electricity here is so high. Consider that at very, very small RPM, RPM we can produce around nine or, or 12 volts. Yeah, even at so slow. And when I was pedaling faster, I was producing about 110, uh, 250 volts. So this, this prototype could be enough to power some furniture at home, so it will work. But it, it can be a very great idea to add like bridge rectifier and also a very simple circuit. If you want to have the more efficient way to take and pick energy from these projects. So today we use three different dynamos and all of them, even if they produce different voltage, because this was low voltage and the other one was high voltage, overall, all of them produce almost the same watt. So the same power, which was around 50 to 70 watts. Of course, you cannot charge your smartphone directly from the bike and connect a cable here because the circuit board here inside has to have perfect 5 volts, otherwise it will break. So I really suggest you, if you want to go in the cheap way, to buy this circuit board that I, will, I used a couple of years ago to build like a house for a dog with solar panels. And this is a circuit board designed just for solar panels. If you think about it, using a bike is very similar to the effect that has a solar panel. For example, with a bike, I can accelerate, go slower, accelerate again, and it's almost the same effect that has the cloud passing on top of a solar panel. Often there is the sun at, in the summer, and we have very high voltage. So the difference of voltage and the difference of voltage with, voltage with this bike are basically the same. So this circuit board takes the high voltage that we are producing, step it and control it, and you can use the same circuit board to charge battery. Having a battery, like a car battery charge, is much more useful and handy because you can just connect a plug and connect your, your smartphone to the car battery. It's very, very simple method and very cheap way. I hope I can give you inspiration with this project and you can just take inspiration and build your own with your idea. I'm just here to give you inspiration. <laughs> this is the only YouTube channel about tutorials I share with you all the things I make for my passion, what I love to do, and yeah, consider to subscribe. This isn't the first project about energy. This summer I built this, that it was a solar wind uh, turbine that can spin all around and follow the wind direction. It was so interesting. Check it out and see you next week with another do-it-yourself tutorial. Ciao, ciao.